Well, I know that a lot of relationships are meant to be private, but I want to let you in on a little relationship secret that I have with Jesus. And that is that I, I read in the scriptures that Jesus is supposed to be closer to me than a brother, like a best friend. And I read that and I hear that with my ears and yet when it comes to my experiences, I don't necessarily feel all the time that Jesus is closer than a brother or closer to my best friend. Or I don't necessarily feel that Jesus is actually closer than I am with Susan. You know, you just you have a connection with somebody and you feel that and yet Jesus is supposed to be closer than all these people and yet that's not always how I feel necessarily. For example, I know that God is holy, 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 is the Lord Almighty and the whole earth is full of His glory. I mean, I feel that. I feel a sense of God's bigness and His power and His might. I've been on my knees before in the presence of God. I have, I have shook uh, I've, I've had tears come to my eyes when I've been worshiping and praising God for just how big He is. And I know a little bit of what it is to fear the Lord. And I know that God is a mighty warrior. And He is capable of doing anything at all. And I know that God is a God of comfort and peace. Because particularly when I've needed it most, God's been my peace. God's been my comfort. And I even know in my head that God is closer than a friend, and yet I don't feel that experientially. And I'm really, really jealous of those of you who have that constant companionship with Jesus. You know? It's like some of you, when you're just spending time with God, and after you've come out of a, a meeting with God, you're just like glowing, and it's like, oh, the angels are all around you because you and Jesus have just got it like this. And I'm being a little facetious, but I know people like that. That it's like they're just talking to Jesus, and it's just like talking to their best friend, and they're sharing laughs with Jesus. And that is awesome. And I yearn for that kind of intimacy and companionship. And I've had it in the past, but it's been a little bit few and far between. For example, I've gone on mission trips in the past, and you've gone overseas, and you're making a really intentional effort to be with God and to be with God's people. And God is, at that time has felt so extremely close. Or I've been on retreats. In fact, a couple years ago, I went on what's called a silent retreat with InterVarsity. And for, a, I don't forget if it was a half day or a whole day, but we went to this remote place, a retreat center. And basically the whole time we were to be with God, silent, not talking to one another, except at lunchtime, it was actually kind of awkward initially. So we had this scripture guide, and we had like a journal we take with us. And I just basically went out, and it was fortunately it was a really nice day, and so I just went out to the woods to be with God. And the first half hour, it's like, this is a little bit awkward. What am I going to do for an entire half day or an entire whole day? And yet I just kind of sat there in the stillness with God and read some scripture. And then a couple of deer came out of nowhere. And this deer's just walking toward me, and I just kind of stared at this deer, and I thought, oh my gosh. God, you are so creative. I mean, think of all the animals that God's come up with, and my, my mind just started to think about how beautiful God was. I was just out there in the middle of the woods. And then suddenly, God just started flooding my mind with all these different thoughts and, and ideas, and I just started to talk to God. You know how you talk with someone, you've got a lot in your mind, and I just started filling up a conversation with God and just sat there in a stillness and it was awesome. I thought this is what it means to be a real friend of God, a companion of God. And it's no wonder that I felt closest in terms of like a best friend and companion when I intentionally got away from all of the busyness and all of the distractions. And a lot of us are busy with a lot of really good things, with family things, with things at work. But a lot of us are also busy with certain distractions that aren't so good. And so I think that can be a real barrier to intimacy. I mean, look how 
busy Jesus was, if you remember from last week, all the things that Jesus was doing, he was healing many, many people with various diseases. He was in Peter's mother-in-law house. He healed her with a fever. He's driving out demons. He's teaching. He's preaching. He is exceptionally busy. And yet we read, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus went to a solitary place away from everything else to pray to his Father in heaven. And two things right off the bat just jump out at me. And one is, even Jesus had to pray. Now I can think of a million and one really good reasons why we ought to pray, but I can't think of a better one than the fact that even Jesus Christ the Son of God, the one who could heal, the one who could get rid of demons, the one who could raise dead people to life. Even Jesus had to pray. Even Jesus had to spend time with the Father, getting strength from His Father, getting a vision, a marching commands from His Father. If even Jesus had to pray, how much more so do you and I need to get away and be with God? And the second thing that just jumps right out to me is Jesus was intentional about getting away and going to a solitary place where he could pray to his Father. And in fact, that idea is so important that when Jesus' own disciples asked him, he said, Lord, teach us how to pray. The very first thing he said to them was, well, here's what you should do. Go away, get by yourself, maybe go into a room or a closet, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. And then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. The point being, you've got to get away from distraction if you really want to be still before the Father. If you want to get marching commands from the Father, you've got to get away to pray. And by the way, if any of you are in a prayer rut... You know, so if you can get into a prayer rut where it's just like you're going through the motions or you just don't to make a minute or two for God, I highly recommend literally making an appointment to get away with God. And that could be as simple as driving to Moraine State Park or Preston Park or going in the woods and just, okay, God, I just need to get away from everything else and I need to hear from you. And I bet you if you're intentional and prayerful, God will meet you there. And I want you to think about your own lives day to day. And I want you to think if there's a particular time for you that would be the best time to just get away from everything else and get with God. Some of you are morning people. I'm not necessarily a morning person, but Jesus evidently was. Very early, the text says, while it was still dark, Jesus got away. And some of you, that's your best time. You can get up before the kids. You can get up before your spouse. It's just you and God with your coffee. You're sitting in your den. You know, you're, maybe you're eating breakfast. And that sounds really relaxing to a lot of you. Or some of you are thinking, I am not a morning person. Maybe mid-morning, maybe a lunch break. I can just get away, go into the coffee room by myself, and have some time with God. But the important thing is making an intentional effort to get away to a solitary place. And some of you might be thinking, Brady, I have no place that's a solitary place. My kids are running around. I've got X, Y, and Z going on. But I read a story of a woman who had a bunch of kids running around. And her only solitary place that she could find was literally mid-morning, I think it was mid-morning, to put a blanket over her head to pray to God. Her solitary place was just simply putting a blanket over her head where she could get away and get with God. And as awesome as that sounds to me, like just getting away and, and just me and God maybe out in the woods, just, just you and God, you got your coffee and you're away from all the distractions, as peaceful and awesome as that sounds, eventually we've got to get back to people, fortunately or unfortunately. And that's what happened to Jesus. Jesus is out there praying, having his time with God, focused. And then all of a sudden, Jesus' disciples come running. Simon comes and says, Jesus, we've been looking for you. 
People have been looking for you. People need healed. People want to hear from you. People want to see some more miracles. Jesus! You know when they're just frantic. And don't you ever feel like that sometimes? You just want to get away and yet kids come running up or people at work have something going on or you're stressed or you've got all these chores going on and it just feels like you're kind of at the end of your rope. And that can be a really exhausting place to live. But I don't know if you have to live in that particular place because Jesus, instead of saying, oh, wait a minute, this guy needs healed. Well, let me go here. Oh, this person wants to hear from you? This person wants to see a miracle? And instead of going to every little demand, Jesus simply said what? After having spent time with the Father, he simply said, let us go to another place, to other villages, so that I may preach and teach there for that is why I have come. Isn't that interesting? There were all these busy things that Jesus could have been doing. Good things. Isn't it a good thing to heal somebody? Right? But instead, Jesus knew after having spent time with the Father, He knew what His mission was. He knew what His purpose was for that day and in general. And that was to get away and go to another village so that He might proclaim the kingdom. Remember, he said, the king has come, Jesus is the king, the king has come, therefore repent and believe the good news. That was his message. He says, I'm bringing the reign of God, the reality of God, and I want all people everywhere to turn from sin and turn to me and believe that I am the good news. That was his focus, that was his mission, and Jesus knew that. And my take on that is that unless we have had that time with God, where we are getting our vision and our marching orders for that day and for our purpose, we are constantly going to have to give in to the demands of other people. And again, that can be a really stressful way to live. And by the way, if you have spent time with God and you come out of that saying, okay, my purpose is something other than loving people like Jesus, or making disciples, or making much of Jesus, then you probably got the purpose wrong. There probably was a little bit of a communication barrier there. But I think a really good example of what I'm talking about is the story that Fran read for us. Not a story, but a scripture text about Mary and Martha uh, from Luke 10. Uh, Jesus and his disciples were on their way. He came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. This might be a familiar story to you. She had a sister, Mary, who also sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations. And she came to him and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work all by myself? Tell her to help me, for goodness sakes. Martha, Martha, the Lord. Isn't that, don't you love that? I remember sharing that with Martha. Uh, Martha read, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed. Indeed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. In other words, there's a time and place where you've got to clean the house, you've got to get preparations in order, you've got to cook dinner, you've got to run kids to and fro. But what is singular what is most needed, more than anything else, is to be free from distraction, to sit at the feet of Jesus. And I'm telling you, how are you and I going to get our purpose if we don't make time to get away from distractions? And again, some things are, sometimes it's good to be busy, but what is of first importance, Jesus said, is to sit at the feet and to receive from Jesus, and to do that well, we've got to make a block of time, at least on a daily basis, to get alone and to be with God. God desires to free you from distractions so that you can focus on things that are of eternal value. And that's really important to me. It's really important for me that God wants to free me and all of you from distractions so we can really be focused on what is of eternal value. Healing is good, but that's not necessarily permanent. 
And Jesus was focused on what is eternally significant, which is to preach and teach to other villages that the king has come, and therefore make disciples, and then go to another village where other people, disciples, can be made, and then that's how the movement spread all throughout the world. But Jesus knew his focus. And this morning, like I shared earlier, I'm speaking to you as a fellow struggler, right? Not an expert, but one who's struggling with you to really find that, that really friendship kind of connection with Jesus, which only comes with spending time. And that, that makes sense, doesn't it? The people that you're closest to, don't you intentionally make time to spend with them? Like your spouse or your good friend? That doesn't just happen by accident. So if we're going to get this thing right, it's got to be intentional. How many of you have ever gotten to work on time by accident? Right? You, you know what you've got to do to get there. So the same kind of thing, we've got to be intentional. Um, and by the way, I want to be... Um, I mentioned about I don't always feel as close to God. And we've got to be really careful about our feelings because our feelings can be deceptive. Okay? And there's something to be said for having daily rhythms with God. Right? Daily in the Word. Daily praying to God. Okay? You might not always feel like you once did 20 years ago when you first came to Christ. Just like, you know, a date with Susan might not feel the same as it did 10 years ago. But it doesn't mean it's not worthwhile. It doesn't mean it's not even better. We're just on a different plane in our relationship. So we've got to be careful about, you know, having this emotional tug and feel when we're spending time with God. But I just want to close, if I could, with some really, I won't say helpful, they're helpful to me, practical advice if you're in a rut with your prayer life. And these are a couple things that you might want to try. The first is journaling. If you're really distracted when you're having time with God, you might find it helpful to journal. And I don't mean writing out every little thing, but I like to write bullet points. And I also like to write prayer praises and prayer requests in my journal. And then you can look back a month from now, and you can see how God might be answering your prayers. So you might try journaling. You might also try asking God specific <coughs> questions of purpose. So for example, you might have this time with God and say, God, where are you leading me and my family right now? Where is it that you want me to serve? What is my singular, what, how have you gifted me, God, so that I can make the most kingdom eternal impact? God, are you, and maybe you're like, God, I'm in between jobs, or God, I'm not sure if I should move here. These are, you might simply ask God questions of purpose, and I bet you that those are things that God's certainly going to answer. This is really simplistic, but I think it's like, man, why did I think of that? In your prayer life, have you ever built in a time for simply listening? The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. It's really hard because we've got cell phones and emails and Facebook and sports and television and music and all kinds of things going on. But have we ever built in time for simply being still and listening? And like I said, for me, that took a half hour on that silent retreat. I'm like, God, I'm kind of hearing birds. I might be seeing deer, but I don't know if I'm hearing much of you. But if you listen, God will speak. I don't know how many of you, maybe it's just me, but I sometimes when I'm talking to someone on the phone, you know, I just find myself like kind of swaying back and forth or I'm just walking around talking on the phone. That might be helpful for you to try when you're praying. I think that can help keep you focused. You know, almost like walking, talking to God as you're walking. Talking to God, there you go. Talking to God as you're walking, that might be helpful as well. Praying out loud, sometimes that can help keep you focused. This Acts model of prayer, if you're like, I have no idea what I'm supposed to say or pray to God. Acts is a really helpful model, which is basically is a model of the Lord's Prayer, and it stands for adoration, just praising God for who He is. Uh, confession, right? That's really important. Conf God, we've fallen short. We need your grace. Forgive me, God. Thanksgiving, God. Thank you for my family. Thank you for this church. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for this beautiful weather. God loves to hear a thank you. And then supplication, asking God for your needs, your daily bread. That's a really helpful 
You can keep a prayer card with you. Again, God will answer prayer. I find this really helpful if you're in a rut. Literally getting on your knees if you're able or getting on your face. Not only is that a position of humility, but that really helps you to see who I am in light of who God is. And if your mind wanders like mine, sometimes what I'll do is I'll be praying and something else comes to mind, so I'll just write that down. But you can actually be praying about that wandering thought that's in your head that make that part of your prayer. And final, I think, finally, I think this is really helpful. This is, it's called the Jesus Prayer, but the prayer where Jesus was looking at the really religious guy and he said, God, thank you that I'm not like those sinners. And then the sinner simply prayed, Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. That is a really helpful centering prayer. You might just, you might just say that, Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. God loves to answer that prayer. Have mercy on me, a sinner. And I think that if we can be diligent about this and intentional, we can say with Jesus in John 17, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. Jesus knew what his purpose was and he didn't drift from it. And in fact, that purpose took him all the way to the cross. And in so doing, he could say, I glorified you. And I hope that that's, I hope that we can say that. Jesus, I glorified you on earth. But it starts with taking time to get away and to be with God. Let's pray and ask that God might help us to do just that. Father God, I thank you.